Now, let us discuss fuel cells. You know, any fuel is burnt it is expected to give heat as energy. But in fuel cells, we utilize fuels for producing electricity. Therefore, fuel cells are galvanic cells that can convert any fuel into electricity. The, the best example for a fuel cell is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. The main difference between ordinary battery cell and fuel cell is that in an ordinary cell all the reactants are kept in the container itself whereas in a fuel cell we have to make reactants to flow through the fuel cells. So we have to supply these reactants from outside. So let me explain the important parts of hydrogen oxygen fuel cells. So here hydrogen is sent inside which is a fuel, here oxidant oxygen is sent here. We have two electrodes, this is a carbon electrode containing nickel, this is again a carbon electrode containing nickel and some amount of nickel oxide. So the electrolyte is 25 percent the KOH and H2O is sent out when because of the heat produced in this fuel cell. So let us discuss what are the chemical reactions behind this fuel cell. So at anode, the hydrogen reacts with hydroxide ion to produce water and four electrons. At cathode, oxygen takes up water to produce and for electrons to produce for OH minus the net reaction. So this is the net reaction in a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell hydrogen and oxygen are made to react to make water a simple chemical reaction to form energy to get energy. We tap energy out of a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell see the voltage that we get out of this fuel cell is around 1.23 volts and it has great advantages and applications. So let me list one by one. <coughs> see the important application, this can be used in electrical cars and number two, they are used in military purposes, they are used in submarines. spacecrafts, etc. And coming to the advantages, fuel cells produce no pollution at all. The product of these fuel cell reactions are simply water. So therefore no pollution. And number two, during the reaction we get fresh water which is purest of anything. During space travels, astronauts utilize this fresh water for consumption. So therefore, fuel cells are so important in modern world. And coming to the disadvantages, you, you cannot uh, use dry materials. You have to recharge hydrogen and oxygen from an external source always. These are the uh, disadvantages and something about fuel cells. Now, we pass on to solar cells. You know solar energy is one of the non-conventional energy sources which is being utilized today. See solar cells are simply photovoltaic cells. When sunlight strikes these photovoltaic cells, this sunlight is converted into electrical energy. We tap this electrical energy for our use. So let me try to draw a diagram of a solar cell. Solar cell or a photovoltaic cell. Simplest arrangement of a solar cell. In any solar cell or a photovoltaic cell, we have 
two semiconductors. One is of p-type semiconductor. Of course, you know what is the p-type semiconductor. In p-type semiconductor, positive holes are responsible for electrical conduction. P-type semiconductor. Normally, a p-type semiconductor is produced when we dope boron, a group 3 element, in silicon or germanium. In n-type, Again, the electrical conductivity is due to negative electrons. So, here we dope phosphorus or arsenic, a group 5 element in silicon. So, in solar cell, we have a wafer-like arrangement. So, this is or a sandwich-like arrangement. Here, the yes, wafer-like P-type conductor is pasted over an n-type conductor. The thickness of a p-type conductor is approximately 0.02 mm and this is 1 mm. When these two conductors are in contact, what happens? Positive holes from the p-type conductor, positive holes from the p-type conductor and electrons from the n-type conductor cross boundary. So, this is the boundary they can simply cross. So, <coughs> so, here this migration will be stopped after a while because the P type holes when they travel from P type conductor to N type conductor they produce a building up of negative charge. So, because of this this migration will be stopped. But still we can make this migration to cross the boundaries by the application of because of the <coughs> build up of uh, this negative charges uh, in the boundary or rather in the uh, p type conductor so the migration will stop so how to make this migration to go ahead so what we can do we can expose this photovoltaic cell to sunlight so that is the principle behind solar cells when the sunlight strikes the photovoltaic cell, what happens? The electrons, remember they are not positive holes, electrons from the p-type uh, semiconductor now move to conduction band, from valence band to conduction band and similarly n-type conductors, these electrons from the uh, p-type conductor can simply cross the boundary and of course n-type electrons will also cross the boundary. So, because of this, you can see a flow of current. So, <clears throat> because of the potential difference and charge separation, you can expect uh, current here. So, this current can be tapped by attaching an external load. So, when N-type conductor and P-type conductors are there, now electric current moves from N-type conductor to P-type conductor. So, this is the principle behind solar cell. So, when you have a number of solar cells, you can get solar panels. So, these solar panels have great uh, <coughs> applications. Of course, you must be knowing. So, let me list some of the applications. Solar panels are used in domestic water heating. They are used in street lighting in villages particularly. Street lighting we use solar cells <coughs> and of course in spacecrafts we use solar panels for tapping electrical energy. So, these are the some applications of uh, solar cells and coming to the advantages Solar energy is a clean green energy, it produces no pollution and it has long life, it is reliable source of energy. And coming to the disadvantages, even though the maintenance cost is low, the disadvantage is that the capital cost is more. You have to spend lot of money for installing a solar panel. And this is the uh, important disadvantage of a solar cell. Now, we are coming to the 
last topic of non conventional energy source which is wind energy so like solar the sunlight wind is also available in plenty of course solar energy and wind energy have common defect on their own in solar energy the disadvantage is that you may not get sunlight throughout the year that is the greatest disadvantage in the solar cell same is the case with wind energy but still wind energy helps whenever there is breakdown in other types of energies okay well let us see what is a, a wind mill this simple diagram <coughs> shows what a wind mill is here we have blades propelling blades which can rotate uh, this is around 15 meters high from the ground level when the wind attacks or it forces it attacks the these blades these blades start rotating so once these blades start rotating we have a gear here this is an automatic gear which will adjust according to the speed of the wind now depending upon the velocity of the wind this blades will rotate once they start rotating they will rotate this shaft this shaft is connected to an electricity generator electricity generator rotates so fast to produce electricity this electricity can be tapped and can be transmitted through a power cable this is the simplest principle behind wind mill here wind energy wind attacks the blades the blades they start rotating while they rotate they also rotate the shaft this shaft rotate uh, the electrical uh, the it really it makes spinning electricity generator because of this electricity is produced this electricity can be now brought to a power cable which can be transmitted so <coughs> um, the important advantage in wind mill or wind energy is that it is a clean energy the wind is available free of cost like sunlight it is available in plenty so if you are able to choose a location where greater velocity of winds are available then it is going to be a greater advantage for the production of electricity and number 3 the space under the windmills can be used for cultivation purposes you can do agriculture under the space so this is these are the some important advantages of windmills when different windmills are <coughs> uh, made into a cluster we call them wind farm so in wind farm we can uh, nowadays see lot of places in tamil nadu also and coming to the disadvantages you need a large land area for installing erecting windmills large land area erection cost is also higher and com coming to the uses finally <coughs> so windmills can be a substitute for conventional energy sources so they can give you electric energy whenever we are short of normal electrical